Hello students. In our last class, we discussed about the defects, that means imperfection present in solids. Now, in that we came to know about the what is point defect, what is vacancy defect, what is interstitial defect, and the most important was Schottky and Frankel defect. Now, today we are going to see some properties of solids, and the first properties that we are going to see is electrical properties this topic is quite related with the physics we have already learnt in physics about it but once again since over here we have got in the chapter solid we have to look after it uh, electrical properties on the basis of electrical conductivity solids can be divided into three categories okay the first one is metals or we call conductors the second one is insulators and the third one we have got semiconductors metals or conductors metals or conductors in this case the electrical conductivity is due to the is due to the flow of electrons without any chemical change and the conductivity of metals is of the order 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 7 per ohm per meter example copper silver and gold they are metal conductors when you consider insulators insulators they have got electrical conductivity is very very least it is of the order 10 to the power minus 10 to uh, 10 to the power minus 20 per ohm per meter example pvc polyvinyl chloride rubber etc next we have got semiconductors the semiconductors they have got they allow only partial conduction of electric current through them the electrical conductivity is 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power 4 per ohm per meter which is intermediate between the conductors and insulators that means the electrical conductivity of semiconductors lies between metals or conductors and insulators and this semiconductors are of two types intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor in case of intrinsic semiconductor an insulator when conducts electric current either at high temperature or on radiation with electromagnetic waves it is known as intrinsic semiconductor whereas extrinsic semiconductor is when an impurity is added to an insulator it makes available either electrons or holes for electric conduction such an insulator is called extrinsic semiconductor the addition of impurity to insulator is also known as doping okay and these are of two types uh, these are two types namely p type semiconductors and p type semiconductors and uh, extrinsic semiconductors are of two types namely p and n type of semiconductors in n type semiconductors in n type semiconductors when the atoms of impurity provides more electrons than the parent atom forming the insulator then it is called n-type semiconductors this is done by adding arsenic or phosphorus which belongs to group 15 to silicon or uh, to, uh, to silicon which has uh, which belongs to group 14 element known as doping in this case silicon since there will be four electrons the outermost and phosphorus and arsenic they will have five electrons so one electron will be left and that will be responsible for its conductivity so impurity of group 15 elements has five valence electron and remains unused such free electron in the crystal move onto the influence of electrical field conducting electric current and then we have got p type semiconductor when doping element has one electron less that is belongs to group 13 element then the parent element group 14 that is silicon then semiconductors formed are termed as p type semiconductors in this case electron vacancy or hole helps in conducting electric current example a semiconductor containing gallium atoms as impurity in silicon so in this case there will be one electron less that means there will be a hole and that hole will be responsible for its conductivity so it is a p-type semiconductivity next thing we need to discuss is magnetic properties magnetic properties of solids okay so 
since each atom in an atom behaves like a tiny magnet its magnetic moment originates from two types of motion that is one it is its orbital motion around the nucleus and number two its spin around its own axis because of this they will show magnetic properties and depending upon the behavior of solids towards magnetic field there are five types the first one is paramagnetism these substances are weakly attracted when placed in the external magnetic field due to the presence of unpaired electrons in ions atoms or molecules of these substances in paramagnetism we have got unpaired electrons and the unpaired electrons have magnetic moment but the randomly orientation cancel each other effect hence in the presence of external magnetic field these unpaired electrons are aligned in the same direction and shows the temporary magnetism example these are the uh, atoms or ions which shows paramagnetism similarly diamagnetism diamagnetism means they are weakly repelled by external magnetic field because they have paired electrons in paramagnetic on page and in diamagnetic they are paired electrons in their ions atoms or molecules being paired the magnetic moment of one electron is compensated by the equal and opposite magnetic moment of the other electron and the example of such compounds which will undergo is nitrogen sodium chloride zinc cadmium titanium oxide water benzene etc that is diamagnetism next we have got the magnetic properties ferromagnetism ferromagnetism in ferromagnetism the substances are strongly attracted by magnetic field and so magnetic and so permanent magnetism even in absence of magnetic field are called ferromagnetic substances example in solid state the metal ions of ferromagnetic substances are grouped together in a small region called domains thus each domain acts as a tiny magnet in an unmagnetized piece of ferromagnetic substance the domains get cancelled when the substance is placed in a magnetic field all the domains get oriented in the direction of the magnetic field so this will be the direction of the magnetic moment in ferromagnetism this ordering of domains persists even the magnetic field is removed so if you remove the magnetic field from here also they will be remain in the same position and becomes permanent effect example iron so iron has got a ferromagnetic properties say for example if you rub a piece of iron with a magnet and remove it you'll find that that iron will behaves as a magnet for some time that is ferromagnetism in case of anti ferromagnetism the substances which possess zero net magnetic moment in spite of the presence of unpaired electrons are called anti ferromagnetic substances example manganese oxide iron oxide fe2o3 vanadium oxide chromium oxide etc they have got the domain structure similar to ferromagnetic substances but the domains are oppositely oriented and cancel out each others in magnetic moment so this is anti ferromagnetism so today we came to know about the electrical properties conductors insulators semiconductors and we have seen the two types of semiconductors intrinsic extrinsic and after that we further classified extrinsic semiconductor into p and n type semiconductors then after that we have just seen magnetic properties magnetic properties in which we have seen just now paramagnetism so the atoms or ions which has got unpaired electrons they will have they will have paramagnetism similarly we have seen diamagnetism in diamagnetism the atoms or ions or the molecules they have got the paired electrons because of that they give rise to uh, diamagnetism and uh there is a ferromagnetic substances ferromagnetic substances means uh if you place that substance in the magnetic field they will align their domain in the direction of the magnetic field whereas if you remove the magnetic field also they will uh remain in that direction where, where you'll find the permanent magnetic effect and after that we just now see anti ferromagnetism the substances possess zero net magnetic property and in spite of in the presence of unpaired electrons example magnesium iron oxide etc